Hello, uh, welcome to my presentation on innovation platforms. So uh, let's start uh, with uh, the following picture. So you, here you see the most valuable uh, companies in the world and most of them are platform companies. And uh, therefore it should be very interesting to learn more about platforms and in, in particular innovation platforms because these companies here all have innovation platforms but also other kinds of platforms. We will start with a definition of innovation platforms. To better understand what innovation platforms are, we will uh, have a look on early innovation platforms. So the first ideas of uh, innovation platforms uh, are hundreds of years old, but nobody theorized uh, on them. And therefore we have a kind of uh, metaphoric uh, view on it. Then we will look on the uh, first uh, industrial innovation platforms. Uh, that are innovation platforms uh, that were intentionally built in a certain direction. In parallel to it, uh, people started theorizing about innovation platforms. The next point is that we ha uh, look on the structure of modern innovation platforms. And uh, there will be, of course, an outlook and a summary. First, we have to uh, differentiate platforms. Platforms bring together people who look for uh, goods and services uh, together with people who offer goods and services. Uh, that's the basic structure. And uh, there are different um, kinds of uh, platforms. So innovation platforms, they consist of uh, core technology. Uh, you all use a uh, uh, technology uh, in this way. Uh, if you look at your um, iPhone, for example, or your uh, Google phone, you will see there is a core technology. Uh, that means there is operating system, either Android or iOS, and there are additional modules that allow to adapt uh, the functionality uh, of your phone according to your needs. And that's the basic structure of an innovation platform. So uh, this innovation platform brings together uh, the developers uh, of uh, modules, that means of apps, and the users of these apps, which wouldn't have met. Okay, there are other uh, uh, kinds of uh, platforms and uh, we should have a short look on them to differentiate innovation platforms. First, there are product platforms. Uh, they are very popular, uh, for example, in the automotive industry. Uh, here you see, for example, uh, a platform for uh, uh, electric cars from Volkswagen. And the idea is to create a basic structure that is used in a multitude uh, of uh, products so that you can uh, fasten up development and easily configure new uh, products. The next uh, type of platform we would like uh, to look at is uh, a transaction platform. You all know Airbnb and there you see this um, idea of a platform in a very pure way. So there are people who are offering apartments and on the other hand there are people looking for apartments and the platform uh, in the middle has as its uh, uh, main task to bring together these two parties and enable transactions. And of course there are social platforms. We all know Facebook and all these platforms uh, there we don't have transaction, but instead it's uh, the task of the platform to enable social interaction. So let's have a look on the early innovation platforms. So the people don't tell it innovation platforms, but we can see the first and important ideas of innovation platforms. So if you go to Antwerpen and uh, visit the Plant and Moretus Museum, uh, you will uh, get an insight into the um, first um, steps of industrial printing. So Plant and Moretus was very famous because they delivered all the Bibles for the Spanish world. And uh, at the time 
uh, that was half of the world because it was uh, the Spanish Empire who ordered all the Bibles. Let's have a look on this uh, printing technology. So we have a modular technology. So we can use these types and combine them to print a book, uh, a newspaper and whatsoever. And what's very interesting is that beyond of this uh, modular core technology, there are innovative modules. You all have already heard about the um, typeface Garamond. Yes, there is Claude Garamond who worked at Plant and Moretus and who created innovative typefaces. And another uh, thing uh, that's very um, typical for innovation platform is uh, that there are co-innovations. So when all this printing uh, took place at the Plant and Moretus, they also were very fond of their quality assurance. So there was a lector who read the first draft of the book and there was a corrector who corrected all the errors in these books. And one of these correctors started about thinking, oh, um, there are often questions about how to write words correctly. And so he created the first Dutch dictionary. Here we see some important traits of innovation platforms. A modular technology, um, innovative modules and co-innovation. That means beyond the core technology, uh, we have additional uh, improvements. So just to tell you, this idea of modularity is even older. If you're lucky and can uh, visit uh, Lindos on Rhodos, there you will see a Greek temple and it uses modularity. A framework of uh, 12 and 35 moduli uh, that creates the basic structure of this temple. The development of innovation platforms, as we would say today, are continued. So that people didn't know about this structure, but they used it. For example, uh, the phone uh, network arised in the 19th century. And uh, in the beginning, uh, there were only yeah, network effects. So because more and more people had their phone, uh, it was more and more advantageous to have a phone and finally it was necessary to do business. And then these co-innovations sparked. So one time they uh, thought about, oh, can we create a telephone book that's not ordered by the name of the people but by their profession? And because the uh, company did not have enough white paper, they took yellow paper. And that was uh, the start of the Yellow Pages, which is nothing else than an innovation platform because it brings together people who have a problem with people who solve a problem. There are further examples, for example, the railway networks uh, in the United States. Uh, around these railway networks, um, companies were created, towns were uh, built up uh, and the same happened with telegraphs. So new kind um, of commerce were created, new connections were built and of course the electricity grid is also an uh, innovation platform uh, of this kind. So the interesting thing about the electricity network as an innovation platform was that uh, the most important effects took place through co-invention. So at the left you see uh, this picture of an old factory for spinning. You see these gears at the top uh, of the ceiling and uh, it was used to uh, transmit the power of a central steam engine. Because of mechanical reasons, it was not possible to freely place uh, the machines, but you also always had to think about where is the steam engine. When uh, the steam engines were replaced by the uh, electrical engines, they first started simply by replacing it. It was uh, much more 
efficient, it was, uh, there was no, not so much dust and so on. The change was not too uh, important. The important thing with electricity happened when the people noticed, oh, with electricity, I don't need a large engine at the center of the factory, but instead I can place many small engines wherever I want because I can transmit electricity so easily. And now we have production sites that were organized according to the production needs and no longer according to uh, the position of the steam engine. And that was the important co-innovation uh, created by electricity. Electricity also created the first huge platform competition between Edison and Tesla. So Edison proposed uh, to use current uh, with the same uh, voltage and Tesla proposed alternating current. Uh, that means uh, current uh, where uh, uh, the voltage uh, follows the sinus curve. And the important advantage of the invention of Tesla was that I can transform uh, electricity uh, if it's uh, presented as alternating current. And that's the precondition for uh, establishing large supply nets. Let's now have a look on industrial innovation platforms. So these uh, Industrial uh, innovation platforms were uh, <clears throat> created with certain thoughts about uh, building a platform. The first one was the IBM 360 platform. The IBM 360s, that's a um, group of uh, mainframe technology computers uh, in the 1960s. Uh, before, if you bought a computer, uh, then, you bought, uh, then you bought a printer that was specially made for this uh, computer and all, also a hard disk that was uh, specially made for this computer. But if you one day uh, changed to a more powerful computer, you had to throw away your printer or to sell it, but you couldn't use it any longer. And the idea of the IBM 360 platform was okay, we have a series of uh, computers, of central processing units that scale up and at the same time there is also a series of printers and hard disk and everything fits together. So that was one of the first intentionally developed uh, innovation platforms. This was a very high risk endeavor. So here's a, um, a citation of um, the president so, uh, of IBM. So the IBM's revenue in 1962 uh, was 2.5 billion. And um, developing uh, the IBM 360 cost twice that uh, revenue. So it was really a bet on the company, but it was very successful. So the um, quasi monopoly of IBM uh, in the 1960s and 1970s was created by this investment. The next innovation platform I would like to introduce are modular logic circuits. They were developed shortly after this IBM 360 uh, takes place. And the idea was uh, all this logic functionality you need to create a computer that means these AND function, ORAS and NOTs and so on, uh, that were uh, formally uh, created as discrete um, circuits to put it into these integrated circuits. And of course you can create integrated circuits uh, uh, in a multitude of ways. But the uh, idea was to standardize these uh, integrated circuits. And below you can see, okay, one of these circuits, uh, so there is uh, these pins which connect the interior circuit with the exterior circuits uh, has a tenth of an um, inch and three tenths of an inch was the distance between these lines of pins and that was standardization. So here you can see very easily what's an important factor for creating a successful innovation platform that's uh, 
not only modul modularization, but it's also standardization. That means you make or you design the uh, things in a way that makes them fit together easily. Creating a platform is more uh, successful than uh, creating a good product. A good uh, example uh, that platforms beat products are video recording uh, systems in the 1970s. So it was Betamax uh, that was technologically superior but only a product and there is VHS that uh, was not so good in the beginning as Betamax but it was a platform and therefore it was successful. Another example is the PC and the Mac. Of course the Mac uh, is a better product but Bill Gates never wanted to create a better product. He wanted to create a platform and uh, very interestingly already in 1975 Bill Gates described the vision of a platform uh, for the PC and that explains the success of the PC. Also, I, have, I admit, the Mac was better. These innovation platforms uh, that were growing at this time, for example, Microsoft Windows, um, created new forms of competition. For example, we had on Windows, Microsoft, and um, complementors like Lotus, which created 1, 2, 3, a spreadsheet. And then Microsoft saw, oh, spreadsheets are good business. Uh, it's a promising business. So let's start the Microsoft spreadsheet. We all know Excel. So we see that there may be competition on a platform between the platform owner and the complementors. And there may be even competition between platforms that uh, noticed Apple when suddenly the uh, Google Maps appeared on the um, iOS platform and the people started to interact with Google on the Apple platform and that uh, created a fierce reaction of Apple uh, and they created also their own uh, Apple Maps application. Now let's have a closer look on the architecture of innovation platforms. So let's take for example uh, assistants such as Alexa or Google Assistant. There we have a core technology uh, that is responsible for interpreting uh, the utterances of the user uh, that are collected uh, with an access point. You all know this echo dots and so on. And there are complements, there are modules that are the skills on Alexa, for example, to ask for the weather report, to ask uh, uh, for travel information and so on. So we have a core technology and again modules. Here we can see this basic architecture that appears again uh, on these platforms. And the interesting thing is Innovation platforms create something which, what is called complementarities. That complementarities is value created beyond the value of the product itself. Because I can combine certain things. For example, look at all these intelligent light bulbs that can be put, uh, that can be switched on and off uh, via voice on Alexa. Uh, no producer of light bulbs would uh, develop uh, voice recognition on its own because uh, it took billions of dollars as Amazon had to learn with Alexa. Instead, they are using this core technology and in this way these light bulbs become uh, and in this way these light bulbs become more valuable to the customer. And I can combine different skills together. For example, I have a nice uh, skill in the morning that's called Good Morning Alexa. And what is he doing? So it switches uh, on the light in the kitchen and it switches on the radio. And here you see the second type of complementarities that is created. So two modules together more valuable than the sum uh, of their single values.
again, through these complementarities, uh, something arises, emerges, what is called an ecosystem. So there are more and more skill developers and device vendors who see these complementarities and see how their products become more valuable to their customers and therefore they start to develop more modules. And on the other hand, there are the users uh, that see, oh, uh, life is becoming really easy using this platform because there are so many modules and devices. And that's the trick of innovation ecosystems. Complementarities are decisive for competition. Uh, here you can see it, uh, what happened uh, between MySpace and Facebook. In the beginning, MySpace was much more successful than Facebook. But then Facebook made a strategic sh shift. They changed uh, their strategic positioning from a pure social platform to a social platform that is also an innovation platform. Uh, they opened their APIs for external developers. And then you know this mechanics what uh, happens. These external developers add modules. And in this way, Facebook became much more interesting for the users. And you can see it here, uh, what happened uh, thereafter. Facebook, uh, yes, was successful and MySpace disappeared. Innovation platforms um, and often overseen new kind to organize economy. So on the left, uh, we have the classical supply chain, the Fordistic, Tayloristic structuring. That means there is someone with an idea, a vision for a product who develops a plan to produce it like the cars that are only available in black and to organize the supply chain. And on the other hand, we have the pure market uh, where we can buy products, but these products are not connected with one another. And I have to all this climbing, this connecting uh, to do myself. And in between, there are these platforms. There we have this core technology that connects these different modules. And therefore, it's much more easier to develop uh, solution providing value to the customer. And uh, because there are so many different uh, modules, we also have complementarities. That means that's an additional value, an externality uh, created uh, through the interaction on the platform. Let's have an outlook. So what are the next platforms? There are already some candidates. Of course, there is cloud and AI. So many people still think, okay, when we are doing AI or data science is to take a math book and to do some regression or um, logistic regression or decision trees and so on and to implement it. Uh, you can do so, but much more successful is to look on the functionality provided by clouds already. And uh, one very special area uh, are large language models. That are language models uh, that are trained with a very huge effort. Uh, and they capture nearly the complete meaning of a language that has the consequence that you can use it for translation. You even can ask these large language models uh, questions and it will answer them. It takes very many resources to create uh, such a large language model. Even large data centers need uh, 100 days approximately to create uh, such an LNMN. But it, they will be the basic technology for language understanding and processing. Let's uh, brush up the presentation by a summary. So we have seen that the majority of the most valuable companies rely on innovation platforms. So that's astonishing because in the public discussion, innovation platforms did not appear so often. So an innovation platform is a platform that offers modularity and complementarities. That means there is an extra in value creation uh, beyond the value created by the single products. 
and these complementarities, uh, they create ecosystems. And in this way, innovation platforms uh, are able to pave a third way between hierarchical supply chains and uh, pure markets. Thank you very much.